This may come as a little bit of a shock, but there's actually not that many new isekai coming out this season. We do still have a few of the typical fantasy adventure stories that we're used to, but when it comes to the seasonal influx of OP isekai protagonists, there's certainly not as many as what we usually get. Even so, let's do as we usually do and take a look at what new entries into the genre that we do have. Starting off with the sequels, first we have my personal favorite, Mushoku Tensei. A direct continuation to what I think is one of the most well-animated and well-developed isekai ever. It may not be as hype as Overlord or Tensida, but it does bring a more realistic portrayal to the genre that's actually quite refreshing. So if you still haven't gotten around to checking out the first part of Season 1, then you should at least watch my video explaining why you should. Not only is the anime being made by a studio that genuinely seems to care, but the original story is praised by many to be one of the best. Now, since Part 1 ended off at the entry-level adventurer arc of Volume 3, it's pretty safe to assume that Part 2 will cover the next three volumes, a trio of arcs that will focus mainly on Rudeus' voyage to the continent of Millis, as well as the mystery surrounding his family's disappearance. And judging from the trailers that they've released so far, it looks like both the quality and story will be just as heavy-hitting as the first part. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this when it starts airing on October 4th. The other Isekai sequel we have is the second season to Isekai Shokudo, the slice-of-life fantasy that focuses on cooking and the unique cast of characters that get to experience it. It's not a series that's really well known for its story, but it does provide a decent level of world-building. It's a simple premise in which numerous fantastical characters intersect at this single magical restaurant. Moving on to all of the new Isekai now, First, we have the adaptation of The World's Finest Assassin Gets Reincarnated in Another World as an Aristocrat, a classic light novel title that pretty much explains everything. A person who was once the greatest assassin on Earth now finds himself reborn at the behest of a goddess. But unlike how this would be the point where the main character would be granted the role of hero, instead he's simply given the same role that he had before. He must use his elite assassin-type skills to eliminate this new world's hero, all for the sake of preventing its destruction. So, what the story turns into is pretty much a portrayal of how this assassin grows into his new life and family, all while incorporating his existing skill set together with new elements like sorcery and magic. It's somewhat similar to Mashoku Tensei in the sense that it follows the protagonist's story from birth to adulthood, but it doesn't approach it in nearly the same level of detail. Instead, you'll see more of the common tropes like an already OP protagonist and his ever-expanding harem of waifus. Now, I'm not sure if this would make any of you want to watch it more or less, but it is worth noting that this story was written by the same person who wrote Redo of Healer. So feel free to use that information to influence your decision however you want to. The next isekai to air alongside this one is another light novel adaptation that goes by the name of The Faraway Paladin. Yet another story that follows in the footsteps of Mushoku Tensei and focuses more on the development of the main character right from the moment they're born. What makes this protagonist unique, though, is that he was raised as the only human child amongst the City of the Dead, eventually growing up to wonder who he is and why he was reborn so far away from human civilization. So we basically get to see his life story as he's brought up by the undead around him, all of which culminates into this interesting journey of him becoming a paladin. Now, the only other isekai coming out after this is Studio Feel's adaptation of the novel The Evolution Fruit this one being a story that takes more of the Arifudetta approach. So, not only does the entire school get transported to this game-like fantasy world, but the main character also starts off as a completely weak loser just like how Hajime did, eventually becoming extremely overpowered and completely generic. I mean, I mean special. This time through the ex machina of the evolution fruit. It's after this that we get more of the standard stuff of him becoming the world's champion as well as him building his own harem. So I'm not entirely sure if this would actually be worth watching, but if you want to see a harem where the first one to join is literally a gorilla, then perhaps this might actually be something you're interested in. Moving on to the fantasy shows now, first we have the new original series that I'm personally most excited for, a joint production by the powerhouse studios Madhouse and Mappa, currently going by the name of Tacked Off Destiny. What this is, is an action fantasy that centers around the theme of music somewhat similarly to how Vivi did. Except, this time there aren't any rogue Terminator-like androids going on killing sprees. Instead, it's these monsters from space known only as D2. So, with humanity falling into ruin because of the emergence of these monsters, it was eventually determined that the only successful countermeasure was the use of music. 
You see, there exists the music art who are the people that possess the scores which can defeat the monsters, while the conductor is the title given to the person that leads them. It makes sense then that these two are often sent out in pairs to fight against the monsters. So, as you'd expect, the story follows a duo of conductor and music art who want to restore the world to how it used to be. It's a fairly interesting concept that seems to be getting a very beautiful adaptation. The only thing that has me a little bit worried though is the fact that this is a mixed media anime project with a Bandai Namco Arts mobile game. And usually anime like that don't have the best of quality. But since they seem to have spared no expense with regards to the animation, I do believe that MAPPA and Madhouse will be able to show us something interesting. I mean, it's not very often that a mobile game anime gets such quality treatment. So there's definitely a lot of potential for Tacked Off Destiny to turn out decent. Next we have the slice of life fantasy, Banished from the Heroes Party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. Another lengthy light novel title that pretty much explains everything. With our protagonist having been kicked out from the party that once fought against the Demon Lord, he decides to move on and start a new life. One that's much more simple than his previous one. But after one of his former partners seeks him out and tries to move in with him, he finds that keeping his identity hidden isn't as easy as he thought it would be. That said, it's not so much a story about this OP character who's trying to hide his powers, but instead it's more like a drama that centers around the main character's relationships. So if you do plan on getting into this anime, then expect a bit more slice of life than anything else. Now, the next show really isn't an anime, but it is a series coming out this season that I couldn't help but mention. Mainly because out of the seven years that I've been playing League of Legends, the only non-toxic thing about it is their cinematics. So when I saw that Riot was making their own animated series, there wasn't a single doubt in my mind that this wouldn't turn out to be amazing. You see, League of Legends has by far one of the most lore-rich universes ever created. That's not to say that you need to know anything about it to enjoy this series, but it's actually pretty amazing how detailed and developed their world of Runeterra is. That said, this series will only focus on one tiny little aspect of it. A small sub-story between several iconic characters from the game that I'm sure will be explained quite thoroughly. So, even if you don't play League of Legends, if you're looking for a unique world of fantasy unlike anything you've ever seen before, then the series Arcane should definitely be on your watch list. It'll release as three acts of three episodes each starting November 6th on Netflix. But anyway, that was all we had for the fantasy and isekai anime. As for the others that I think are worth mentioning, there's Studio Signal's adaptation of the supernatural manga Platinum End, the third season to the sci-fi action series World Trigger, then the second season of 86, which I'm personally very hyped for. If you're someone who's more on the cultured side though, then perhaps World Ends Harem would be more of the show for you this season. The rest are all these new mecha series like Deep Insanity or Sakugan. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for this seasonal roundup. If any of these shows looked interesting to you, then be sure to let me know which ones you'll be watching down in the comments. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see a whole bunch of new Mushoku Tensei videos. That's the anime that I'll be covering for the majority of this season. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!